Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, Meg Ryan and David McCovey, plus Joe Walsh with Cleto and the Cleto. And now, Jimmy Kimmel! It's a big day. If you follow this sort of thing, you know it's a very big day after three long weeks with no one driving this filthy Greyhound bus we call America. We finally have a Speaker of the House, and the gavel goes to... Mike Johnson of Louisiana. I never heard of him either. I don't know. But I learned about him today. Mike Johnson uh, defended Donald Trump in one of his impeachment trials in the Senate. He's been called the most important architect of the Electoral College objections that contested the results of the election in 2020. He voted to decertify the results of that election, confirming Biden as president. So he checks off all the important boxes. Also, <laughs> anti-gay, anti-choice, pro-conspiracy theory. He seems terrific. And <laughs> I'd say not only is he not the best choice for a speaker, you can't even definitively say Mike Johnson is the best Mike Johnson they could have chosen. <laughs> There's Mike Johnson from Louisiana, He's a Republican state representative who may have been a, a better Johnson overall. Mike Johnson might not make the list of the top 10 Mike Johnsons. Do you have quadruple Olympic gold medalist Mike Johnson? You've got Canadian bodybuilder Mike Johnson. You've got Swedish chef Mike Johnson, who would make everyone little meatballs every day. You could have given the gavel to one of at least five Mike Johnsons from the NFL. Or even country music's number one black yodeler Mike Johnson would have been great. It was fun. You could go to the middle of the phone book and pick any of the hundreds of Mike Johnsons. Each one would be a better choice for speaker because not one of them tried to overthrow the presidential election in the House he now represents. But instead, Republicans swiped way right on this Mike Johnson, who looks like a kid dressed up as a congressman for Halloween. <laughs> We want to thank all the press for waiting. It's been quite a process. <laughs> Democracy is messy sometimes, but it is our system. This conference that you see, this House Republican majority, is united. Is united. That's right. This new squeaker of the House. And last night, so when Johnson locked up the, the uh, nomination, he gave a press conference. And pay attention to the older lady on the right side of the screen. If there are any questions, we'll take a couple, but we're all pretty weary. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've asked your question. You've asked your question. Go away. We're not doing oh. policy tonight. Go away before Mima will wax you with a rolling pin. Uh, that unpleasant woman is Virginia Fox from North Carolina. She put herself in charge of a yelling at journalist who dared ask Johnson about his role in trying to derail an American election. Somebody Centrum Silver kicked in extra hard. <laughs> and that old bat, I don't know if you noticed, she's shoulder to shoulder with Lauren Boebert. Uh, look at these two. Beetle and prune juice together. <laughs> but the biggest loser in the house today is former Speaker Kevin McCarthy, who yesterday floated the idea that he would be reinstalled as Speaker with Jim Jordan as his assistant Speaker, which as far as I know isn't even a thing. How would an assistant Speaker work? Like, McCarthy says something, Jim Jordan goes, I also say that. <laughs> but that isn't happening now that Johnson is in charge. By the way, even though Mike Johnson tried to decertify um, Biden's election win, Biden called Johnson to congratulate him on winning the election because that's what normal people do. Biden said he looked forward to working together to find common ground. Johnson said he looked forward to burning democracy to the ground. So. <laughs> Um, he had all the backing of, of all the major Caucasians, by the way, including Mike Pence, who wrote, Mike Johnson's a proven conservative leader with a servant's heart. I urge every member to vote to elect this good and decent man next Speaker of the House. I guess January 6th is all water under the bridge they tried to hang Mike Pence off. 
on that day because uh, these Republicans really, you, you could almost feel for them. They had to bend over backwards to find someone who wouldn't get kneecapped by Donald Trump at the last minute. He pulled a beauty, just so everyone would know how important he still is. Trump posted a series of frantic texts from one of the speaker candidates uh, embarrassing himself trying to please his master. This guy, Chuck Fleischman of Tennessee, texted, I'm in speaker race now. Please tell President Trump, thanks. Five left, voting now. All candidates now 100% Trump. All five. I preach Trump in my speech. Can you imagine that these guys still have to kiss his ass? Donald Trump, not only is he not president anymore, he's basically sitting on the stoop outside prison waiting to be escorted in. <laughs> and not just one prison. Three of them. He is this close to being in an orange jumpsuit with cuffs on his little wrists. And these <laughs> sad, scared little ducklings in Congress are uh, trembling with fear like a collection of uh, Hummel figurines on your mom's shelf <laughs> at the beginning of an earthquake. They're just like hoping he approves of them, groveling for his blessing, begging a man who is gonna be eating his meals off a tray in the cafeteria of a penitentiary every day for the rest of his stupid life to please like me, please your majesty, pick me. To be I have news for you people, he's not El Chapo, okay? <laughs> He, when he goes away, you're all still gonna be there, and my God, are you gonna be ashamed of yourselves. Hopefully half as embarrassed for yourselves as we are for you right now. <laughs> Harry Mason had a, uh, a dramatic day in court today. It was the second day of face-to-face -face testimony with his former lawyer slash fixer, Michael Cohen, in that $250 million fraud case in New York. Trump got so worked up, he stormed out of the court after the judge refused to dismiss the case, it, like it was some kind of Lifetime movie of the week or something. But according to the reports, Trump shouted, I'm leaving, and waddled right out of the courtroom. Yeah, no, that didn't happen at all. And look at that. The last time he was this mad was when McDonald's told him they stopped serving breakfast at 11 a.m. <laughs> a lot of people, including Donald Trump, seem to be confused about what this trial is. He already lost. The judge already ruled he's liable for fraud. The trial is to determine what the financial penalty will be, and that number seems to be going up every day. Trump is under a gag order from the judge. He's not allowed to attack members of the court staff after he attacked the clerk a few weeks ago. And then, of course, today he did it again. This judge is a very partisan judge, with the first of his very partisan sitting alongside of him, perhaps even much more partisan than he is. Now, to be fair, Donald Trump thinks partisan is a hard Italian cheese, but <laughs> then a reporter hears this and asks Trump, hey, did you just violate the terms of your gag order? Did you violate the gag order, Mr. President? No. no. Were you referring to the clerk? With respect to what? The disparaging comments. No, not at all. Who are you speaking about when you said the person sitting inside the judge? Yeah, any other questions? <laughs> well, the judge had some questions. After the comment, he put Trump on the witness stand and made him swear to tell the truth, which got a huge laugh. And <laughs> asked Trump who he was talking about when he referred to the person sitting next to the judge. Trump said, oh, Mike, I was talking about Michael Cohen. And the judge said, I find the witness is not credible and find him $10,000. It's the second time now he's been fined. But, I mean, honestly, if you're gonna gag Donald Trump, fines aren't gonna work. You'd be better off, if you wanna gag him, you should use one of those giant turkey legs from Disneyland. <laughs> At least three of Trump's lawyers, uh, former lawyers, have now accepted plea deals in Georgia. And in the case of January 6th, his former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, was granted limited immunity in, in exchange for his testimony, which means it's only a matter of time before Trump denies he ever met Mark Meadows or even <laughs> visited Washington, D.C. The walls are closing in. They're taking a long time. They're like the walls in the Star Wars trash compactor scene. <laughs> but they are closing in nonetheless. In friendlier news, the matchup for the World Series, it will be the D Arizona Diamondbacks playing the Texas Rangers. Diamondbacks beat the Phillies in game seven of the NLCS last night. After they were down two games of one, they pulled out a clutch road win that left fans in Philadelphia displeased. We had a home field for two games, two games, and you let them come
come here and beat us? Phillies need to sell Trey Turner. That guy's a f***ing idiot. We went farther without that guy. <laughs> the Phillies, honestly. Let's trade the whole f***ing team. This team f***ing blew today. I'm feeling like I want to go lay in traffic. <laughs> Philadelphia really is the happiest place on earth. And, and now as the baseball season wraps up, a uh, fresh new NBA season has begun. One of my favorite young players is a guard for the Lakers named Austin Reeves. Watch this. That's Austin. Reeves a three. Bang! Final seconds, Reeves. It'll count if it goes. I love this kid. He's a killer. But tonight, we're going to put his killerness to a festive test. Tonight, Austin Reeves will face his most terrifying opponent of his young career, and that is me. Please welcome from the Los Angeles Lakers, Austin Reeves, everybody. How you doing? I'm so, first of all, I'm so impressed by the way you play. I'm glad the Lakers locked you down and signed you. Uh, it, I mean, are you, do you enjoy living here? Yeah, I love it. Uh, great weather year around. Obviously, the traffic's uh, not the best, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, happy to be here and be a part of this organization. We're happy to have you here. You were undrafted, which means none of the scouts were smart enough to make you a draft pick. You played your way into the starting line. Why do you think you're undrafted? Is it because you look like everyone's nephew, <laughs> do you think? I mean, that probably has a little bit to do with it, uh, obviously. And then I went to school for five years, so my age was a little bit of a, um, you know, they didn't like that. They want young guys that have potential. Right, you are pretty old. Yeah, yeah. I am. Yeah. <laughs> 25 now. Does LeBron ever invite you over for Taco Tuesday? No, I still hadn't got that you invite, haven't, huh? so I'm mad Interesting. at yeah, I wonder when that will happen. I've been waiting on it for two years now. <laughs> Well, um, you're obviously one of the best shooters in the league, uh, but that's with a basketball. What I'm wondering is, have you ever made a shot using a seasonal gourd? I have not, no. <laughs> okay. No. The NBA season started yesterday. Tomorrow is, I don't know, if you know, National Pumpkin Day. We thought it would make no sense, but we're doing it anyway. <laughs> For you and I to go head to head in a pumpkin shootout. <laughs> These are real pumpkins. This one. Yeah, right there is good. Uh, I'm going to put my jacket right here. These are um, real pumpkins. They're heavy. They're about eight pounds each. Okay. We got a regulation hoop with um, dangerous lights uh, just <laughs> near it. And our defenders, there's going to be some defense here. The defenders oh, wow. are the hottest Halloween decoration <laughs> in the country right now. Lewis, I am not a decoration. A team of Lewis's. My so. name is Lewis. Have you ever shot anything heavy? No. It's not uh, like baseball where you swing yeah. a heavier bat. It would potentially, I hope it doesn't screw you up for the game tomorrow. But uh, I hope not either. You can go first. I didn't shoot it great last night, so hopefully it's better tonight. All right, all right. All right. Here we go. Just whenever? Yeah, we'll Here alternate we go. shots. You got to stay behind the line? Yeah, don't go don't, crazy. All right, yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Those are the dangerous lights I was yeah, talking I, about. I yeah. yeah, it's really heavy. It's very... Oh, that look good. That look good. All right. Oh. You don't get a chance. You don't get a chance to match it. All right, let me Go take ahead. one shot. Yeah. I shouldn't have taken the chance. I should have quit while I was behind. Well, thank you. Uh, congratulations, Austin. I, this, I mean, this is better than an NBA title, right? <laughs> no, 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 I can't say that. All right, that. well, thanks for being here. Do you want to slam dunk a pumpkin? I can try it. You think you can do it? Awesome Reeves, everybody. Be careful. I can barely dunk on a 10-foot goal. That looks a little high, though. Okay, don't hurt yourself. Please, God, I'm praying right now. There he goes, guys. Awesome Reeves, everybody. Watch your locals. Home opener against the Suns tomorrow night. We have a good show tonight. Joe Walsh is here. And we'll be right back with Meg Ryan and Dave Duchovny.